I'll be talking about partial nephrectomy for larger renal masses, and while I'll discuss the relevant literature, I think it's important to note that as we push the envelope and challenge the paradigm for how we best manage these patients, I'll share with you a couple cases that I think exemplify how this can both be a success and how it can also lead to failure. So this is a 67-year-old patient of mine who presented initially with a, a perinephric bleed and a renal mass you can see there on the right. A month later, she presented um, to the Mayo Clinic specifically wanting a partial nephrectomy. She had stage 3 chronic kidney disease. So we re-imaged her with an MRI and uh, the perinephric bleed resolved. She had a relatively straightforward partial nephrectomy. So I did this open under cold ischemia, uh, 8 centimeters, T2, clear cell, grade 3, uh, no dissection at the same time, negative margins. Uh, three months later, she returns to see me. Um, and she has, this is her IVC here, this is bland thrombus, she's got tumor thrombus here, this is the proximal extent near the uh, right hepatic vein takeoff, it was also into the left renal vein, and uh, talk about a bummer. So um, I took her back to the OR, uh, we took this out, uh, this is no longer a nephron sparing approach, took her kidney out as well. Uh, the kidney was actually negative, all the tumor was um, in her thrombus and she's currently NED, but went through this uh, unfortunately. So just quickly, uh, guidelines on T1B renal masses. A healthy patient standard is radical nephrectomy. Another standard is partial nephrectomy. For the um, unhealthy patient, the standard is radical nephrectomy, and recommendations, if that's not appropriate, are for partial or active surveillance. These are the uh, EAU guidelines this year, and I'll just point out that uh, they state for a solitary tumor up to seven centimeters, nephron sparing surgery is the standard whenever technically feasible. This is a collaborative review in European Urology where they state similar findings that it, partial nephrectomy is established treatment for T1A tumors and an emerging standard for T1B tumors, but that the choice should be um, individualized. So why do we consider partial nephrectomy in these larger tumors? This is from Igor Frank, looking at or chance of benign versus malignant and low grade versus high grade based on tumor size. And you can see that for tumors between 4 and 7 centimeters, the chance of it being benign is still around 10 percent, and the chances of it being low grade, even if malignant, is still around two-thirds to three-quarters. Uh, we duplicated this study um, at Memorial Sloan Kettering and essentially found identical results with an identical number of patients. Brad Leibovich was the first to publish on partial nephrectomy comparing to radical nephrectomy for tumors 4 to 7 centimeters. This has been duplicated uh, multiple times, including the group at Memorial. And when I was a fellow at Memorial, we combined these two databases, 1,159 patients, T1B tumors, so 4 to 7 centimeters, uh, who underwent partial radical nephrectomy and conducted outcome analyses. Predictors of cancer-specific survival in a multivariable analysis are depicted here. I'll just point out that uh, type of surgery, partial versus radical, was not significantly associated with cancer-specific survival. We found no difference in overall survival when comparing these two treatment approaches. We found no difference of the two treatment approaches on overall survival in a multivariable analysis. And thus, we concluded that for T1B tumors, 4 to 7 centimeters, overall survival was similar, partial versus radical. Cancer-specific survival was not compromised when using partial nephrectomy. And thus, we felt these results supported the use of partial nephrectomy for select patients uh, for renal tumors 4 to 7 centimeters. Chris Waite uh, looked at the Cleveland Clinic experience, also comparing T1B renal masses 4 to 7 centimeters. 1,000 patients, partial versus radical nephrectomy. They did a propensity scoring model to reduce the uh, uh, selection bias that is inherently present. About a little over half the patients in this series underwent partial nephrectomy. This is predictors of cancer-specific survival, and again, I'll just point out that there was uh, no significant difference, partial versus radical nephrectomy, in their multivariable analysis. Uh, they did see a improvement in overall survival among those treated with partial nephrectomy compared to radical nephrectomy. This persisted in their propensity scoring model in a single predicting variable, um, which is depicted here, but when they included multiple predicting variables, 
treatment type, partial versus radical, was no longer associated with overall survival. However, postoperative renal function um, and uh, T stage was. And this is showing the postoperative renal function. So these patients who uh, presumably had surgically induced chronic kidney disease, as you can see as their GFR uh, went down, this being uh, stage four chronic kidney disease here, both overall survival and cancer-specific survival uh, was diminished. Cleveland Clinic also looked at their laparoscopic experience, T1, or tumors greater than four centimeters, 35 lap partial patients, 75 lap radical patients, and similar to what I've shown you before, recurrence-free survival, cancer-specific survival, overall survival, all of them were similar for these patients who were selected for partial nephrectomy done laparoscopically. This has also been looked at uh, using the SEER registry. Uh, I'll just show you two. There are multiple out there. Uh, these are the two most recent, but uh, amongst almost 13,000 patients, no difference in overall survival, partial versus radical nephrectomy for T1B renal tumors. This is the latest one published uh, this year. Uh, this is a cumulative incidence curve, but you can see no difference in terms of survival. Uh, what I also is showing here is this is the incidence of use of partial nephrectomy for tumors four to seven centimeters. And you can see um, prior to 2000, it was rarely used. And as of 2008, uh, partial nephrectomy in SEER data was uh, uh, utilized 16% of the time. This is a little bit different than what we see at academic centers. Uh, at Memorial Sloan Kettering, these are looking at percentage of patients treated with partial nephrectomy for four to seven centimeter tumors. 20% in the year 2000, and this steadily increased to 60% uh, in the year 2007. So I'll briefly touch on uh, T2 tumors or greater partial versus radical nephrectomy. This is from Fox Chase. This summarizes the available evidence. You can see that there's not very many studies. None of these studies have triple-digit uh, patients. Uh, some of them are even multi-institutional. So there's not much out there, certainly nothing um, randomized or prospective. This is the largest study looking at these larger, greater than seven centimeter tumors comparing partial nephrectomy to radical nephrectomy. There were 69 patients, T2 uh, or above. They were matched three to one to radical nephrectomy patients at the Mayo Clinic, um, and, and outcome analyses were conducted. And similar to what we saw with the four to seven centimeter tumors, Metastasis-free probability, the red line is partial here. Metastasis-free probability, local disease recurrence, cancer-specific survival, and overall survival were all similar when comparing radical nephrectomy to these patients who were selected for partial nephrectomy. Uh, interestingly, also in this study, uh, we look, or uh, Rodney Bro looked at uh, complications, and the complication rates are higher when you do partial nephrectomy in these larger renal tumors. It was 17% uh, for uh, the partial nephrectomy in this group and obviously zero for the radical nephrectomy patients. So uh, just back to the case example, um, here's a 46-year-old gentleman who presented my clinic with this 29-centimeter uh, uh, renal mass. Unfortunately, he had uh, donated his right kidney uh, as a living-related transplant a few years prior to this. So, um, you know, this is a problem. Um, uh, we took him to the OR, I took him to the OR, and we removed this and, and, and a little bit of the kidney and the capsule of the kidney. It ended up being a sarcoma, uh, but he's now five years out uh, NED. So I think this is an example of uh, a success for uh, uh, nephron sparing surgery for these larger renal tumors. So in conclusions, for T1B, T2 renal masses, for select patients, partial nephrectomy appears oncologically safe. Uh, the benefits of preserved renal function should be balanced with the higher risks of uh, perioperative complication. Based on the literature to date, there's probably no survival benefit in partial versus radical nephrectomy for these larger renal tumors. And um, uh, maybe Dr. Campbell will touch on this as well, but obviously a randomized trial uh, is needed because everything I've presented um, uh, was uh, retrospective based. So thank you very much.